Hi there, and welcome to Reinhardt Synth number 8. Well, it's unavoidable, no escape. I had to do a GoTech floppy emulator install at some point, and that point in time is now here. On my bench, I have a Roland W30, which needs some love, a new display, some a broken key replaced, switches replaced, a good clean, and a GoTech floppy emulator installed. Before I go explaining how to do all that, uh, first a bit of Roland sampler history. The W30 sits just after the beginning of Roland's timeline on of released samplers and it's a direct descendant of Roland's first sampler, the S50. The S50 came out in 1980... Oh, wait, let's stop this background music. Okay. The S50 came out in 1986 and featured 12-bit sampling, sophisticated editing capabilities and quite innovative, the possibility to connect a monitor for even more comfortable control of the sampler. It features 512 kilowatts of sample memory, that's 12-bit uh, words, so actually 756 kilobytes, and could sample with 15 or 30 kilohertz sampling rate. The W30 came out in 1988 and is basically a S50 with a built-in sequencer of MRC 500 fame. Uh, and it also has 512 kilowatts of sample ROM, so you could get going without first having to load samples from Floppy. Therefore the name, Music Workstation. The other addition is that the W30 has a time variant filter with envelope and LFO control for each voice, so you can have dynamic filter movements. Uh, this is something the S50 does not have. Something the W30 does not have though is the video output. Instead it has a nice large LCD and typical for the LCDs of that era it uses the electroluminescence backlighting which craps out after about 20 years. And nowadays we have much better LCDs with LED backlights so this one is going out. Uh, more on that later in this episode. Um, it has a polyphony of 16 voices, is 8, is eight parts multi timbral and has a 61 key, keybed with aftertouch. Uh, the samples are built in ROM, come from the uh, standard S50 library and, uh, and are timeless classics which found their way in, for instance, the U110, U20 uh, sound canvas and just lived on and on and on in any subsequent sound canvas derivative. Uh, back in the day, the W30 could also be upgraded to be able to connect to a SCSI CD-ROM or hard disk. And Roland did some shady business here, I think. You could buy the KW30 SCSI upgrade kit for $175 and adjusted for inflation, that now that would be something like $420 in today's money. It was to be installed only by a dealer, and the dealer should never show the installation manual to a user. And be sure that the manual never comes into the hands of a general user. Um, okay. In mine and many others' opinion, this is a scam. Uh, the main PCB is already prepared for SCSI. It has the connector and the circuitry already installed. And the kit contains just the controller IC and a floppy with the updated operating system. The SCSI controller IC, the MB893528P, you can, and back then could, uh, buy for around $10. So, and yeah, okay, those Chinese base sellers are known to sell fakes sometimes, but so your mileage may vary. Anyways, back to this repair. A lot to do in this episode. First, we test the W30, what exactly is wrong with it. Then we prepare the GoTech for installation into the W30. We have to install Flash Floppy. Um, install and test the GoTech, of course. Then replace the LCD, remove the EL backlight circuitry. Con contrast voltage uh, needs to be adapted. And we have need to control the current going through the backlight to adjust the brightness. Um, we have to replay panel switches, replace a broken key, clean it, test it, and then we're done. So, here we go.
Um, a quick word on where to get these displays. Uh, prices have gone up like crazy the last years and the blue New Haven I'm installing here I bought in September 2020 with Mouser for about 49 euro excluding taxes. Uh, currently they go for 67 euros excluding taxes. Um, so at the moment I'm buying them more for by display uh, where they still have reasonable prices. Um, buyers from Europe should be aware of course of the import taxes and that they post using the more expensive FedEx instead of normal parcel post which adds to the total cost of course. Links in the description.
2,000 years later. And the Oscar goes to...